Hello everybody, welcome to Juan's Knitting Garage. I hope everybody's doing good. Today I would like to talk about swatches, the way that I do my swatches, which is very similar to what the book says, you know. Um, the only difference that I change between what the book says and the way that I do it is that some of my swatches, not all of them, but some of them are much bigger than what they said. Um, the book usually says um, 60 stitches by 60 rows with marks uh, on, on a stitch 21 to 21, so 40 stitches between marks, which, you know, basically that's what I do sometimes, not always, but um, sometimes, sometimes I forget to do the marks and I just do <laughs> the 60 stitches. Well, this one is on the bulky, so it's different, um, different amount of stitches. But like on this one, it says 60 stitches, 60 rows, marks between, uh, between um, 40 stitches between marks, that one. Um, for reef, for reef, I never do 60 stitches, 60 rows. I always do 100 stitches, sometimes 120 rows or sometimes 150 rows. Uh, the reason of that is because it's, uh, reef moves. Reef is very hard to get a very accurate measurement. But if you do it bigger and then you measure it, then you're getting an idea, you know. Or it's, I think it's better doing it bigger that one um even on the bulky when i do reef i don't do 30 stitches 30 rows i do 40 stitches 40 rows or sometimes 60 rows depending on how many you know depending on how big i want the, the swatch for example this one it's uh 40 stitches 40 rows on a full cardigan stitch this one is uh, 100 stitches, 120 rows on a full cardigan stitch on the standard. So that one. Um, for example, and this one, for example, um, it's um, 80 stitches, 90 rows. Because I want to see, you know, um, how the pattern was going to look on a bigger scale than just 60, you know, 60 by 60, which will be like this much and this much. So, I mean, you will still get an idea of how it's going to look, but then, you know, it's not really. So, that's why I did this. This one, I mean, a little bit bigger. Um, This one is, um, is done on the bulky with a thicker yarn and this one yeah it is um, I even forgot because I just did this for, to get the pattern no, I didn't use it sometimes I do a lot of swatches just to see the pattern and then I do the swatch with the you know the rows that I want and the rows that I need and the, the stitches that I need and things like that to get the measurements. Sometimes I just do it swatches just to see how the pattern is gonna look, like on this case. This one. Um, on lace, when I do lace, you know, sometimes get a little, some, sometimes it does get confused and sometimes people get confused with lace because, you know, lace, moves the stitches move you know they're transferring to the right transferring to the left or all transferring to the right with whatever and people don't know exactly where to put the stitches or where to put the marks <coughs> i'm sorry the marks not the stitches where to put the marks when it's a very busy pattern like you know let's say it's all like this um i usually what i do is i will cancel the stitches on the on the stitch 21 and 21 for a couple of rows before I put the mark and a couple of rows after I put the mark. What I mean when I say cancel is once that the lace carriage, let's say if you're using the brother, once that you 
go across and the lace carriage has select all the stitches that, that need to be transferred, I push those needles back so they will not transfer. So on the next row, it will just knit. So basically you will have a couple of rows of stacking it between all the lace, which is okay, you know. Um, it won't change the gauge that much. It will change it very, very minimum that you won't even notice it. You won't even notice it. So that's what I do when I do lace, you know. I will cancel those stitches on each side for a couple of rows, let's say four rows before I put the mark and four rows after I put the mark. That's, and it's just to make it easier, not for only any other reason. It's just to make it easier. Um, when it's uh, stuck in it or solid or jersey, whatever you wanna call it, then you know it is easier. You just put it on the same and different color and and just continue knitting. Um, I don't know, you can notice that on some of the swatches have that. So that is just to mark the tension that I use. But I think everybody knows how to do that, you know. On a corner you just put like, you know, you make as many holes as the tension that you're using. If you're using the reef and you wanna, do, if you wanna mark the tensions, because sometimes I put a tag, but you know, sometimes the tags fall off. So um, what I do is like, let's say if I use tension four on the main bed and four on the river. So I will do four holes, need six, yeah, six rows. And then I will do another four holes on the main again and then need as many rows you need and that's bind off or put waist yarn whatever you want so basically will be oops so so let's say this is your swatch yeah so this will be 30 30 and then you know i will do four holes do four rows one two three four and then another four whole rows okay. and then you will know that that's four four on the main bed four on the river that's that's what i do to make it easier for me that's it you know not, i don't do it all the time <laughs> when i remember i do that <laughs> I'm sorry, I should not say that, you know, but, but it's true, you know, I'm not going to say that I'm perfect. Nobody's perfect, you know, so um, like I said, I sometimes I put a tag, but, you know, sometimes, you know, they get tangled and you pull and they get, you know, the tag comes off and you forget what you do. So, so if you do that, so say like on this one I did it too on this one I didn't do it at all on this one I didn't do it at all because on this one I wasn't gonna use the swatch to um, write a pattern it was just to see the pattern so if I want to just see the pattern then I usually don't do anything um, but if I'm gonna use it as a to take the measurements yeah and then yeah this I will mark it and I will put the the stitch size if I remember <laughs> so that's how I do it and see like I said and this one for example this one is done on the uh, standard gauge as well um, see? this one is done on the standard gauge as well and it's a different yarn so it's a different measurement so and then you know once that you get your <coughs> your marks and your measurements and you press it and relax it and do whatever you have to do to the swatch then you take your measurements what i do usually is like i do the swatch i take the measurements when it comes right off the machine you know let's say you know i this one just come off the machine so I will measure it and it's um, 8.25 and I believe this is 60 stitches. Yeah, 
there is 60 stitches between marks so um, 60 stitches between marks is 8.5 so I divide 60 I divide 8.5 so it's 7 I just get a piece of paper and write 7.05 stitches equal one inch and then I know this one is a hundred rows a hundred rows is 625 <coughs> so 100 divided by 6.25 is 16 rows 16 rows equals one inch and then I will write uh, gray half cardigan stitch tension I forgot what tension it is but let's say 7.7 seven. and this is right off machine right so I, I will write down that one I will let it rest for a day or so or I will wash it I will wash it dry it and let it rest and then I will take again the measurements right after you know it gets washed and everything and then you know I compare my measurements from the washing to this so then I will know exactly how much it is shrunk you know so what I mean is like okay so right off the machine is 8.5 you know the stitches to to an inch i mean 8.5 inches to 60 60 stitches 100 rows okay so that's when then if after it gets washed this may change to 6.5 and this will change to 14.75 let's say so we know that for every 100 rows 60 minus 4.75 for every 100 every 100 rows the yarn is going to shrink 1. Point 25 in inches yeah, I hope it's not that confused <laughs> so that's how I measure it you know, so it will be one and a quarter inches every hundred rows so if you need 300 rows you know that um, If you have needed 300 rows, you know that 3.75 inches is going to shrink. It shrinks. So that's what I do. You know, that's how I do it. I let it rest. I wash it. I dry it. I do whatever I have to do with it. Then I'll take the measurements again. So I hope this is uh, something you can use and um, yeah, basically something you can use. Like I said, when I do lace, you see, I put the stitches, I put the marks in a couple of rows just to make sure, you know, just to make sure I measure it and see that that's 40 stitches gets me five inches so which that means is eight stitches to an inch and i know this is 60 rows so 60 rows by the by five and a quarter is uh 11.42 rows one an inch so that's how I do it. Um, I have said before, 
on Facebook that I had never used the green and blue. I think it comes in yellow as well. Um, 